Hi guys, John here at Common Sense Outdoors. So today we made our $2 sling bow. I've refletched the arrow we were playing with out there that we shot a few times. It's refletched correctly now. Uh, and I changed it to two fluorescent orange fletchings and one white. Uh, those are the that's going to show up the best for survival scenario. Last thing you want to do is lose your arrow. Um, so the point about being able to make this, to put this in a kit, survival kit, bug out kit, whatever kind of kit you want to put it in, this isn't going to take up hardly any room at all. This four and a half inch piece of uh, arrow shaft with the arrow rest we made inside of it and the and the bungee straps and leather takes up almost no room now if we want an arrow to shoot in it this doesn't fit into a kit very well so today I'm going to show you how to turn it into this the three piece arrow real easy um, if you're going to make three or more well worth your time to make them yourself if you only want one go buy one it's not hard to make it uh, this one's actually a shorty compared to the one we're about to make it's only three inches shorter So, first thing we have to do is I've measured the length of my arrow, actually cut off almost two inches of the arrow from what we had outside earlier today. I've measured the length, I've divided that by three, and I've marked it to make two cuts, turn it into three pieces. Before we cut it, um, to decide how long your arrow should be, if you're gonna, oh, okay, kitty, what are you doing in here? <clears throat> if you're gonna shoot it out of a longbow or a slingbow, just grab your fingers on the knock, touch your thumb to the corner of your mouth, stretch your other hand out, and to the tip of your thumb, your arrow needs to be at least that long. You can see I've probably got looks like an inch or so extra to go with there so that's a good way to figure out how long you want your arrow if your release setup is different you can get away with going shorter if you're shooting compound with the overdrive you can go shorter uh, my compound bow I actually shoot a 24 inch arrow so pretty much the shortest I know of anybody I know of in fact I used to shoot a lot of 3D shoots and they always had one target that was all steel except for the bullseye you could hear people hitting it all day long I couldn't wait to get to that target and I'd make sure to get there after everybody else because they'd mess up the tips on their arrows and I'd pick them up, take them off, cut them off and make shootable arrows for me for free so there's several ways you can cut this most of you probably aren't going to have the saw I'm going to use they do make a little saw like this this actually came with another arrow saw setup I have it's a long aluminum uh, rail and this just slides into it and cuts that would work it could be done with a hacksaw if you do it real careful and slow it can also be done with a tubing cutter if you do it really slow this is going to pinch in the where you're cutting it a little bit you'll have to ream it back out a little bit if you use that but it can be do, done with a hacksaw or a saw like this you just have to do a little more cleanup work we're going to go ahead and cut it with this saw funny story about this saw is my dad picked up a 
whole big box of archery stuff at a yard sale for her. I think it was 10 bucks years ago. This saw was in that box. It wasn't on the 2x6. I put it on the 2x6. But this is like a $180 saw that was in that box, along with a Fletcher and about 2,000 Fletchings and some arrow rests and sights. It was a score of a lifetime. Anyway, I've got it, like I said, I've got it marked. We're just going to cut it off. Okay, then what you're going to want to do, let me tip you down. What you want to, want to do after that is, I've had this, I don't know where I got it. It's been in my arrow box here for at least 15 years. Just an old cheapy China pocket knife. And I just take and put the tip into the arrow shaft and just give it a little tiny bit of a spin just to make sure there's no burrs on the inside now if you don't have a fancy saw and you cut it with a hacksaw or a saw like this you're going to end up with little burrs on the outside too so then what you're going to want to do is get a piece of sandpaper and just deburr the outside too I shouldn't have to worry about the outside with the saw I used. I just like to make sure there's no burrs on the inside of the cut. Okay, the next thing you're going to need is if you bought an arrow that's already fletched and already has your tip insert which you should be able to get for under five bucks I think Walmart sells arrows for 250 sometimes unfortunately they are I think they're almost all carbon now uh, and for survival scenario kit mentality I would take aluminum over carbon every day twice on Sunday. Aluminum is a lot more forgiving. If you bounce it off a rock or a twig, it may put a ding in it and it may put a little bend in it. If you do the same thing with a carbon, uh, it's going to shatter and break. I've shot both carbon has its advantages you pick up about 10 feet per second normally but for long term or survival scenario I would definitely go aluminum so the next thing you need is if you've got the arrow that's already fletched and already has a tip insert you need four more inserts I've actually seen somebody, I can't remember where I've seen it, somebody on YouTube did a video, something like this, and they stated that they had a hard time getting these in. They had to really force them in. These are size specific. So on your arrow shaft, there's going to be a number. This is a 2216. That's the size of your shaft. Those numbers mean stuff as far as size and spine weight and whatnot but your inserts will also have a number you'll buy them in a package of 12 I think for like a dollar maybe two dollars you have to get the size that matches your arrow shaft and they'll they'll pop right in the next thing you're gonna need okay so you spent maximum of five dollars on a fletched arrow 
you spent maybe two dollars on a dozen inserts which you're going to use four of them okay and then what I went and got was a number eight 32 36 inch long th all thread just go ahead and show you the tag on what I have there hopefully you can read that threaded rod zinc plated I would have loved to have got this in aluminum uh, they had aluminum rods where I went but they didn't have threaded ones and I wasn't about to break out the tap and die set and thread the whole rod myself so basically what that's going to do is it's going to add I don't know maybe an extra hundred maybe an extra hundred grains to my arrow maybe so all I've done is I've cut two pieces off this rod at an inch and a half so we've got those ready to go 36 inches at an inch and a half each that'll give you what 24 pieces you need two per arrow so with one of those rods you can have enough of those to make 12 of these three piece arrows that rod cost me two dollars and ninety four cents if you're getting where I'm going this isn't expensive so then all you need to do you also need ferrule type this is kind of like a hot glue it's an archery glue uh, it's F-E-R-R dash L dash T-I-T-E ferrule tight the trick with this is I've seen some people actually use this stuff wrong <clears throat> I've got an old piece of junk bottle top torch with no knob Let's turn that on you're not going to want to try to do this with a lighter it won't get it hot enough you need a torch or a propane I could use the propane stove and just hold it in that if I wanted to uh, some kind of blue heat something hot then all you do is take your let me make sure you guys can see me okay you should be alright I'm done with the safety glasses take your insert just put it in about to the first notch it's kind of notched and just set it in there now I'm not heating the insert I'm actually heating the arrow shaft about one inch of the arrow shaft and I want that heat to transfer into that insert I don't want to apply the heat directly to the insert it's going to this glue is going to hold a whole lot better if you do what I'm saying if you just heat the insert and plop the glue on there it's not going to adhere to the shaft like it's supposed to so I'm heating the shaft that heat's transferring into that insert then I'm just going to roll it right across my glue I'm going to tip it down shove it into the top of the bench and then quench it in water okay there's one we do the other end the same way two you're just going to do this until you have an insert in each end that you cut One more.
crooked somehow. I think that's the right number. Sure doesn't act like the right number. Let's heat it up again and see what happens. size. This should be the right size. I'm not sure what what I did there. Let's try it again. torch we use our fancy handle we turn it off get it out of our way we're done with our ferrule tape then we go back to our piece of junk pocket knife I don't know, you probably can't see, but when you do that ferrule tight to put those inserts in and then you push it down on the piece of wood or bench, you end up with a little little bit that squirts out. You just want to take like a piece of junk knife like I have here and just go around and chip that off. So where were we at? If we went and bought three arrows, let's say we paid five bucks an arrow. Which, like I said, Walmart has them for two fifty an arrow, but I think they're all carbon. If I was ordering shafts, I think it'd probably cost me about four dollars an arrow for shafts and fletchings and everything. So let's say four dollars an arrow. So three, three arrows. Of four dollars is twelve dollars. Two ninety four for the all thread. <clears throat> That's uh, fourteen. We'll call that fifteen dollars. Maybe two dollars for your package of inserts. Um, you're gonna have a whole bunch more all thread than that. So seventeen dollars max. I could make three of these and have have enough all thread left over for ten more of them. Well worth your time to make them. They're easy. Okay, there's one thing that I didn't mention is when you cut up your arrow if your arrow's long enough, there'll be a little bit of a mark 
probably left to show you that that matches that end. In other words, how do you keep track of which piece goes where? So what I would do, you obviously know which end the fletchings go on. And if, when you cut them, it leaves a little bit of the, the printing I didn't get all the glue off right there. If it leaves a little bit on that end of the middle piece, that'll tell you which way that goes. If not, you might want to mark that middle piece. But then what I would do is take and just put a little paint or something on the tip so you know which way the tip goes. I did the same thing on this one. And just like that, we now have three piece arrow. Um, when you cut these pieces of all thread at an inch and a half you don't have to do anything to glue them in or anything because they bottom out into the inserts. So right there it's bottomed all the way out. So when I put the other piece on it automatically We'll tighten the two pieces together. And when you unthread it, it's either going to come out in one piece or the other. If it comes out in the wrong piece, I'd take it out and do it so that another way to keep track of which piece goes where is to leave this piece in and leave that piece in so it's boom boom and with a little paint on the end you know which end is your tip otherwise you could put it on this way if you didn't mark that so just like that we have an arrow that is now compact and under 12 inches. Pretty easy stuff guys. You save a lot of money if you're wanting three or more of these. I didn't, I don't think I said the ferrule tight. Uh, you can find it. Where did I find it? I can't remember if I found some on eBay or if I had found a website. You could probably find it in a local sporting goods store. I think it was about five bucks for this little piece. But that lasts a long, long time. You can do a lot of arrows with one of those. Alright. <clears throat> Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along. Hope you liked that. Just a down and dirty easy way of making yourself some three piece arrows on the cheap. So, appreciate your support, appreciate your views, your comments, your likes. If you haven't already, please subscribe. More videos coming real soon. Thanks for watching.